How's it going boys? Johnny Superb Man here and I want to bring you guys a quick update video about how we're enhancing our EASHL series. Uh, we've been doing a lot more EASHL games this year. We're going to keep it up. We're going to be doing even more but I, I wanted to enhance it and make it more fun for you guys and for us. So going forward we're going to do this new style of EASHL games. You're still going to get the full game with the live commentary from all the superb men but now I'm going to turn you guys into analysts, into reporters, into scouts. All right. In Introducing the new rating system for our EASHL games, okay? And the rating system is going to be dictated by you guys. You guys are going to watch our games and basically tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. And uh, I really want to grow this team into a uh, one of the best 6v6 EASHL teams. To be honest, right now we're a good 4v4 team. We're a... Uh, uh, above average 5v5 team, but you know what when everybody does get on and we get into a 6v6 You know we'll win But if we go up against you know a good team one of the best teams in the world It's not even a competition. We do get slaughtered I want to get to a point where any team in the world at least we can give them a competition I mean trying to become the best team in the world. That's that's a big goal That's 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 hard to get to right, but I want to at least be uh, competitive And I want to start from the ground up and you guys are gonna help us out with that. All right, so this is the new rating system I got, and basically going forward with every game that you guys watch, I want you guys to use this, uh, use all these ratings to kind of um, uh, scout or uh, give reports on each one of us playing in the games, alright? So I'll go down the list here, there's seven different categories for ratings, defense, discipline, positioning, playmaking, finishing, consistency, clutch, and poise, all right? Just like for NHL 14, uh, all these individual stats, and uh, each one of them have a range between one and five. You can't go lower than one, you can't go above five. And the intervals are, are uh, 0.5, so you can go from one to 1 1.5 to two, 2.5, three, 3.5, four, 4.5, and five. Those are all the individual ratings that you can get for each one of these uh, categories, right? So let me just uh, go ahead and explain what e every one of these categories basically is about. Defense. All right, so when you're giving a rating about uh, someone on defense, um, it's not about just the defenders. It's about how everybody plays defense for their own individual uh, position. Now, when it comes to defense, it's stick lifts, poke checks, body checks, and uh, anything else that causes a turnover. How does your how does the player act on defense, right? Does he cause turnovers? Um, is he is he wild with his stick checks? Is he wild with his body checks? That's what basically defense is. It's about turnovers, causing turnovers, all right? And somewhat positioning, but mostly stick checking and body checking. That's defense. Next, discipline. Um, now, this is not just about taking penalties. A lot of it is taking penalties, but it's about doing the right thing in the right area. For example, right, uh, six seconds left, a face-off in your own zone. The wingers decide off the face-off to go up to look uh, for a breakaway with six seconds left. That's not showing good discipline. The right thing to do in that situation would be for the wingers to go into the face-off circle and play defense for the last six seconds, showing good discipline right there, showing uh, that they know what's going on, right? Or um, say, we take a face off and somebody's not ready to go that's showing per discipline it's also the penalties but it's also about being aware of what's going on at the ice right at that time so discipline that's that for uh for that rating next positioning this one is strictly positioning away from the puck this kind of goes uh hand in hand with defense but i don't want you guys to get it mixed up positioning is just where the player is when they don't have the puck all right and this is something that's hard to judge somebody because when you're playing i mean you don't usually get to watch your back unless you record video right but either you're watching the puck or you're watching yourself but when you get to watch a game back and you're not playing you get to see everybody on the ice so I want you guys to judge us by how well we position ourselves when we don't have the puck are the wingers on the right side right is the defenders behind the net on the offensive zone is the center behind the net in the defensive zone is it are we all over the place right can we keep on moving or do we actually stop where we need to stop positioning away from the puck that's a very important stat all right uh, next playmaking now, this is not just about assists. This is not about scoring goals. This is about 
um, making the right move, basically making something happen out of nothing. And that doesn't mean making a chance happen. That means, say, a defender has the puck in our own zone, two four checkers right on him, and he makes a clutch breakout pass right around the boards up to the winger, and it's out, right? You forget about it. You don't see it on the scoreboard, but at the end of the day, he made a really good play to advance the puck up to his teammate, and his teammate can now go into the zone, right? A playmaking pass is something that you, you, you pass the puck to your player, and your player is in a better situation than you are because of the great pass that you made and the great fake that you made before you passed it to drag the players towards you. Uh, good passes, saucer passes, quick passes, passes that you didn't see, breakaway passes, right? Basically, just in general playmaking. It's not about points. It's about just how you play with the puck. Do you do you create things or do you hurt your team, right? Playmaking. It's kind of a broad category, but uh, you'll see it when we're playing more. I'll, I'll uh, define it a little bit better. Finishing. <clears throat> All right, this is not about scoring goals, uh, scoring points. This is a strictly a, um, about if a player's in a situation where he should score, right? 51% or higher, he should score a goal. How is he, right? That is finishing. If I say I'm taking the puck up and I deke out two people and get a shot and I miss, um, you don't say, oh, he didn't have good finishing. I shouldn't have been in a situation to finish. I had to deke out the two computers. But if you're on a breakaway against a human goalie, that's a situation where you should score. No, no excuses, all right? You're on a breakaway. What kind of finisher are you? In a situation where you should score, are you a good finisher or are you somebody who's a 25% kind of guy, right? Same thing two on one. It should go in, right? It's a kind of chance where the offense should put it in. It's 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 not on the goalie to make the save. It's on the offenseman to score the goal. So that's finishing. In a situation where you should score, do you or don't you, all right? Finishing. Cause, uh, consistency. Uh, this one is basically just about, you know, um, Say somebody scores a really nice goal and you give them a 5 out of 5 for finishing. Well, are they going to pull off that nice goal for the rest of the game? Are they going to pull off that nice goal for the next two or three games, right? You can't just give somebody a, a reflex um, rating. It's got to be consistency. So is somebody consistent from the beginning to the end of the game? Or are they a flash in the pan, turnover, 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 flash in the pan, turnover, turnover, penalty, turnover, right? Because that's not being consistent. So consistency. And then last but not least, clutch or poise. Uh, this stat is basically um, how does how does the player play at the end of the game when the the game is on the line, right? When when something is really important out there, it's easy to get a highlight reel goal in the first five minutes when the other team is not really settled in just yet. The game is still zero zero, regular season game, right? It's another thing to tie up the game with five seconds left on an end to end uh, goal where you deked out two or three people to make something happen, or you deked out two or three people to make an amazing backdoor pass where it was just a tap in, right? That would be a clutch goal. So clutch is basically a about how the player plays when the game really matters. Overtime, last five minutes of the game, penalty kill when it matters, power play when it matters. That's clutch and poise, okay? So there's all the uh, criteria. We're going to define it more while we're when we're uh, playing the games for you guys. But uh, that's basically what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to give us a rating for every single one of those categories. Now, you can go back and watch the games that we've already done in the ESHL, but um, I've, I've already told my teammates it's a clean slate. We're starting from now going forward, all right? Alright, so you guys can go back and look at that and look for patterns going forward, but uh, we're not giving the overalls yet. The overalls are going to start to come out any with any ESHL games that you see come out after this video, okay? Now, last but not least, here is a little example on the screen for you. This is nobody on our team. This is just an example, right? For every single one of those categories, I've given a rating. 4.555, 4.54, 3.5, and 2.5. Now, the great thing about this is I don't want to just give the ratings like that. I want you guys to give us the ratings like that so I can uh, look at all the votes and see how many people say this and, and uh, come to my conclusions myself, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take every single one of those numbers multiply them by 20 add them up and divide by 7 and when you do that you get an overall out of 100 so if you take all those numbers there all right multiply each one of them by 20 then add up all those answers all right and then divide by 7 you will get 82.8 so you can kind of say for this player with all those individual stats his total overall is 82.8 all right so you can see how we're going to have different overalls for every individual player and this overall 
overall number is not going to stick. It's going to change every week, every two weeks, all right? I'm not going to change it every day based on every game, but uh, every week or two, I'll give you guys an update on our current overalls, all right? Now, hang on. Let's jump to part two of this. All right, so on to part two. Now, basically... Again, we're not uh, giving overall numbers just yet. I'm going to give you, these guys a clean slate, but I want to show you guys our, uh, our club stats so far for NHL 14 so that you guys can see the patterns, all right? If you can see the patterns right now, you can look for those patterns in the games um, once we start it up, right? So if you want to look at the stats here, fine, but remember, don't judge anybody based on their individual stats just yet. I'm not doing overalls until we start up after, all right? So there's our team. Uh, yeah, we got everybody on here. Uh, games played, there you go. Me and Crip have played the most. Ray Stanley's down there as well with 148. All right, Pray for Eyes next. Domsky and Rotes yet to hit 100 games, but still they're there. Uh, goals, Kryptonite in the lead with 213. Uh, Prey, 180. Uh, me, 96. I, oh, uh, yeah, I should probably say this. I play defense. Crip plays right wing. Uh, Reebok plays forward whenever he does play. Uh, Domsky plays defense. Prey plays forward or winger. Rotes plays center. All right, and Ray Stanley plays goalie. That's why Ray has no goals in 148 games played. I should have I should have told you guys our uh, our position first. All right, uh, assists. There you go. I'm in the lead. Oh, sweet defender in the lead with assists. Uh, points. Kryptonite way in the lead. 397. All right, so you can take a look at the games played, goals, assists, points. But again, all right, if you're gonna if you guys are gonna judge us by just individual stats, that's not the whole point of this. It's about every EASHL game that we play goes up. Right? We can't hide. We're we're gonna put up the bad games as well. So I'm just giving this uh, quickly for you guys just so you can see plus minus now this is actually an interesting stat because Reebok is minus 19 for some reason um, games played yeah Domsky is less than uh, uh, less plus minus than his games played I think Rotes is as well yeah see that's what I mean when we get our 5v5 or 6v6 with Domsky and Rotes in there or Reebok that's when we start losing to these tough uh, clubs right but when we play like fours or fives with uh, me Crip uh, Prey, Ray Stanley, and then with Rote or with Domsky, then we can dominate. But when we get the whole team on uh, uh, going, that's when we run into problems. And that's what I want to fix. I want to become a good 6v6 team. All right, so the plus minus, uh, got to fix that a little bit. Uh... Penalty minutes, I, the only thing about penalty minutes is it adds in the fighting, right? So you can't really distinguish, like Kryptonite has the most penalty minutes, but he fights the most, so you can't call him the uh, most undisciplined. That doesn't work out like that. Power play, shorthanded, uh, hits, <laughs> he definitely goes for the most hits though, Jesus. Uh, block shots, uh, shooting percentage, and goals against average, all right? So I just wanted to show you guys our, uh, our stats quickly. But uh, yeah, so going forward with the EASHL series, um, in every game that we show, I want you guys to really be blunt with us. Go ahead and give us a rating out of uh, for every one of those categories. You don't have to go through every player and give every player a rating. If you just want for this episode to scout Ray Stanley or to scout Domsky, you can do that and just give a whole scouting report on Domsky and uh, give his defense, his discipline, all that a number, right? And then when I go back, I can take all the comments into... Um, into uh, uh, account and basically come up with a number that looks fair, you know, because obviously we're going to have a, a wide range of opinion on this, but that's the whole point, all right? You guys are going to make us better with your opinions, all right? And it'll give our ESHL team, the other guys, a chance to watch their own gameplay some more and be criticized for it. All right, boys, so if you have any suggestions on how we can improve this, another category that might need to be added in, uh, let me know. I'll be active in the comments to um, answer any of your questions about this if you do, and the individual uh, rating systems. Don't worry, we'll get this ironed out before the next EESHL game. And within a week or two, I still have the uh, the bad throat, but within a week or two, I uh, we will be coming out with another EESHL game to start this up. All right, boys, and I will see you there.